In this video, we're gonna show you how to remove and replace front brakes on a Ford Explorer. 19 millimeter socket, remove the tire. I'm gonna take the bleeder screw cover off the dust cover, and then I'm gonna open that bleeder screw while it's mounted so that I can uh, just snug it up and get easier access once it's dismounted. 10 millimeter wrench, break that free. Let's see if we can get some brake fluid out, perfect. Just snug it up enough, that's all we want. We do have a catch bucket underneath. 17 millimeter socket or wrench, we're gonna break this caliper slider bolt free. Get the top one free. take those caliper pins out. Take the bottom one out first. Set it aside for cleaning and we'll take the top one out. As you note, the top one has that rubber boot. That means that pin needs to go back in the top slider. I'm going to take a caliper hanging bracket like this. You can use a bungee cord, whatever works. And I'm going to hold that out of the way. Wrap that, hold it right up on that strut tower. You don't want it hanging down by the flex hose. You can damage that flex hose. Now we're gonna remove the pads. I'm gonna see if I can leave them in there. I'm gonna take this bracket off first. 18 millimeter socket. I'm just gonna take this caliper bracket bolt right out. I'm gonna move right up to the top one and loosen that one up too. gun and take those out the rest of the way. Let's grab that bracket, slide it right off. So now we're going to dismount the hold down mounting screw for the rotor to the hub and it is a T40, Torx bit 40 or star. And I'm going to use my electric impact or air. I'm going to make a comment because I've read a few that people said that you're not supposed to use air on this. You have to do it by hand first. And that actually is wrong. You want to use an impact on a Torx bit because actually a tool truck, if they find out you used a ratchet on this, it will twist the ears on that. And they might not warranty it. So with that being said, I'm going to take the T40, put it right in the center of that mounting screw bolt and loosen it. Doesn't twist the star bit and that's exactly what they're looking for. So now I'm going to take some penetrating spray and I'm going to try to free this up. It's probably rusted pretty good on that hub. I'm going to take a lug nut and I'm going to put it on hand tight and then that way I can hit that with a dead blow hammer and knock that rotor off. This is just to stop it from flying back at you. That's good enough. Then we'll grab a dead blow and hit that rotor. Take the lug nut off. Now you can just grab that rotor. Pull it right off. So I just use an abrasive pad, not a sanding disc because I just want the rust. I don't want to cut into the metal. So you can do that real lightly. Then I have another one that is built just for brakes. And the piece you can add right onto that. 
and it has the hole, so it goes on the stud, lug nut, stud, <coughs> cleans that just like that. <coughs> now if you don't have any air at all, that's when you're going to use the wire brush. You take a wire brush and you're going to go real close in here. If you can get sandpaper in there, go ahead and try it by hand. It won't take too much or any metal off. But this is where the rotor seats and we want that to be flush. I'm just going to take some cleaner. I got my catch basin. I'm going to clean off the residue. Let that dry. Once it's dry, I'm going to use some copper never sees because I like the copper stuff. It's a higher temp. The silver stuff still will work. You just need a light coat. And now we can put on our new rotor. I'm going to put the rotor on backwards first. And then I can take my parts cleaner and clean this side of the rotor. Just get that light oil coat they put on for storage right off. Then we're going to flip it around and mount it and do the same to the other side. Now you want to mount that mounting screw, line it up with the hole. Let's get our mounting bolt. Clean it up. While that dries, I'm going to clean my caliper bracket. All right, so now we have our caliper bracket, new pads, and new tins. What I want to show you here is, do you see how these tabs are? Well, that's what you want these tabs to do that when you rehook these up. You want them to be in that place, out like that. So let's take the pads out. So now we have the pads out, we can pull the old hardware out, the old tins, and replace them once we clean the area. The brake pads supply all new tins and actually caliper grease, which is perfect. So first we're gonna clean this up, get that out of the way. Here's a brass or a metal brush. And I want to get in there just like that and make sure that there's no rust underneath the tins. Do it to both sides. Now I'm going to take some parts cleaner and I'm going to clean that. Take some clean rag, just make sure it's nice and dry. Then we're going to take our silicone paste or caliper grease, whichever one you use. I use silicone paste because sometimes it has a little bit of a higher temp to it. Lightly coat underneath where the tin will go. So the high rise part goes in the back here. That tab goes on the outside. You're going to line it up, squeeze it down, just like that. So make sure that that's the other side, other side. Here we go. Make sure that tab is on the outside. Squeeze it into place, push it down. Do the same to the other side. You don't need tons of this. You just want to make sure you coat it so that the water can't make it rust and expand up. Perfect. Now I'm just going to add some new silicone to the inside. I want that to fill that boot up right in the little cutouts of it. Ex it. Always examine the boot, make sure there's no tears. Even a pinhole will cause these pins to seize up. I like to silicone the outside because it keeps it flexible and heat resistant.
examining the boot while you do it. Any pinholes, you need to get new ones. Perfect. Now let's get our pads, seat them in. Do this side for you. Pull down on that little spring. There you go. So now we're going to push the pistons back on this caliper. It's a dual piston. And I have my catch basin down below. I'm going to grab my 10 millimeter wrench and I'm going to open, open my bleeder screw. Give it a little twist. Take that wrench off. Make sure it's right up below that bucket. And then I'm going to take my tool. This is awesome because it will push back both pistons at the same time. Hold it there, and as I squeeze both back, you see the fluid runs right out of that bleeder screw, and it doesn't suck air in, so you should have no air in the system after. But this prevents you from pushing dirty fluid back into the ABS module or the master. Now with that being said, I can, both pistons are flat, and I can snug up my bleeder screw so it won't leak. Grab my tool and dismount it. Now I'm just gonna take my bracket and move it out of the way. And now we're gonna go get the bracket with the, the pads on it and mount it. So now take your mounting bolts for the caliper bracket to the knuckle. You're gonna take a wire wheel to that and get rid of all that old factory thread lock and apply a new fresh thread lock. I cleaned up the bolt threads on the mounting bolts and I'm just going to add a tab of fresh medium strength Loctite on both bolts. So now I'm going to take our caliper bracket with our pads in it, line it up, start one of the bolts by hand. and get the bottom one. And that's the 18 millimeter socket. Just gonna get my electric gun, bottom them out before I torque them. The torque for these mounting bolts, the 18 millimeter socket, is 122 foot pounds. Had to add an extension for this to be able to work. Double check the bottom. Now you're going to take your caliper pins and you're going to wipe all the old grease off of them and do the same to the other one. This is the top bolt and we're going to add fresh silicone or caliper grease to the pin. Now we can get our caliper, take it off of the caliper hanger hook. And we're just going to mount it. Sure that boot is out of the way. We already did the same to the bottom. Just center that boot. Start this by hand. And that's a 17 millimeter socket. We're just going to snug them up. And now we can get our torque wrench. So the mounting caliper to bracket slider pins 
17 millimeter socket and the torque is 55 foot pounds and that's for a 14 inch rotor. If you have a 13 inch it's 53 foot pounds. We have a 14 inch rotor so we're going to go right to the 55 inch, I mean foot pounds. Double check the bottom. One more time on the top. Okay, now we're going to open our bleeder screw, let it gravity bleed real quick so that we can make sure there's no air bubbles. I'm going to do that for like a minute to two minutes. I'm going to keep an eye on that, make sure no air bubbles pop out. Once I feel comfortable, there's no more air bubbles. If there's any, I'll close it up and then wash my caliper down. All right, it's been running for a little over two minutes. No air pocket at all, no air bubbles. So I'm gonna snug it up. That's bottom it out and give it a good quarter inch turn. Now we can clean it off. And reattach that dust boot. And put that back on. Take your lug nuts, start them by hand. This is a 19 millimeter socket. And you're gonna tighten them up in a crisscross pattern. Wheel torque is 100 foot-pounds. Put the 19 millimeter socket on. Start in a star pattern. Double check. So now that you're done with your brake job, you've pumped up your brakes, you can open the hood, go to the master cylinder which is located in front of the driver's seat, take that cover off, confirm what it takes for fluid. This takes only dot four. So we have some dot four brake fluid here. And we're just gonna top off our master. You'll see right where that line is, don't go above it. That is, the line is on the side. You'll see it say max and min. Sometimes I like to just shake it and it confirms where the fluid is because it's kind of hard to see. Top it off just a smidge more and then we're good to go. Make sure there's no dust or grease falling in there. And that the seal cover is good and then lock it. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.